gives them the means to navigate successfully the desert, slave, or slave, yeah, he said 2007 he started there. Yeah. They have some really fascinating things going on. They have five different groups meeting in their church. The Korean, uh, second generation Korean group, the Hispanic group, the third group. Um, when you get into the other two, it was just fascinating. Yeah, he's doing good work. Picture your problem. The title of my lecture would be the meaning of this. Yeah. In the third people see the travel of this and the brands of the law. Yeah. Absolutely. Any group or combination of the sentences is also an idea which they can derive from the destruction of the replication for the The narrow and shallow screens from the mountainside and each other as the open sea. We have but to go forward to go around the table. No one can stand by anyone who needs to go down the ground to fall down. So, under someone's definite title of picture,
Sindh, are you almost done here at the seminary? What's your story?
Tim, do you still have kids at home? Does anyone live with you guys or they're they're living with us? Yep. <laughs> yep.
in May, I got a uh, call from Carl asking if he could do a show in June. And I said, no, you can't do a show in June. And when I found out about what the content of the show was like, this made perfect um, sense for the gallery. The gallery this fall has several shows that are related to social justice. And um, this just seemed like a great way to start. This is the first time I've agreed to have a North Park faculty member other than art show in the gallery. I have a policy of not, it's just dangerous territory if you open it up. But Carl teaches philosophy of art, he's been teaching our majors for years, and he is a brilliant photographer. Um, but I think he'll be the first to say that this is a problematic show, right? It's raised controversy on campus. The whole issue we deal with in this culture between whites and the power dynamic and African Americans is not, is a very serious problem. And this show really heads into that face on. And I, I really respect Carl for taking on what is really not, not an easy subject to, to, to deal with. So that's all I have to say. But thank you for coming. This is amazing to know. Thank you, Tim. Um, yeah, thanks for trusting uh, me and uh, the men inside Stateville and the other collaborators on this show. Um, there's been a lot of people that have uh, been a part of it. Uh, I guess my role is as the photographer for the most part. There are a couple images uh, that I did not take. Uh, this one of Smiley over here. Uh, Oscar Parham at the end, and then obviously the one that I was in it. So thanks, uh, Vicki and Michelle, for contributing a couple photos here. Um, but you've, uh, it's great to be in this gallery, so thanks for making an exception um, uh, between all the other artists that you've stewarded in this gallery and students and other faculty members. It's uh, great to be a part of it. Um, so obviously with a program as <coughs> impressive and uh, complicated and important as the School of Restorative Arts, um, it has been a collaborative effort uh, from its beginning. Uh, I'm not really going to speak too much about uh, how the School of Restorative Art all works, um, its history or that. Uh, there's some of that in the show and there are experts here and people here who were with it from the beginning, uh, even before it was a thing uh, that can answer all those questions. Uh, so hopefully this show, uh, for those who weren't aware of this school um, or didn't know much about it, hopefully this show brings more attention to it, more involvement in it, more engagement in it and that. Um, but certainly, uh, gratitude and thanks to um, the different institutions that come together around this school, uh, obviously, North Park Seminary, North Park University, uh, Stateville Correctional Center. Um, Laura is out there online, Laura Hostable, who is uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I think of her as like the principal of all the different uh, educational programming that happens at Stateville, and she coordinates so much. Um, the School of Restorative Arts is a very significant component of that work there, but it's not the only uh, program that works in Stateville. So, um, so thanks to people like Laura uh, for all the work that they do. And uh, I do have to mention Chaplain Adamson, who is not here, recently retired, uh, just because he was uh, instrumental in uh, one of the people that transformed elements of Stateville from what it was 20 years ago to what it is today in terms of uh, things. It would be fun if he was here. He's a great big personality and uh, would have lots to say. Uh, obviously this, well maybe not obviously if you don't know much about the program, but as a program, as a school, as a uh, master's program, this began with Michelle Clifton Soder's room vision. Um, and her experience, uh, she was inside teaching uh, before there was a master's program, before all of that, uh, the idea uh, for this kind of program came out of collaborations with the other students. Um, but uh, she was the courageous innovator 
and the person who's stuck with all the different things that you have to go through in order to get a program like this started. And the current director of the program, Vicki, um, is here. So uh, those two on our end, from the North Park end, uh, I, I should say from the seminary end and that, that those two have been kind of uh, uh, certainly the coordinators of so much of what is um, going on. But in general, as I hope this show communicates and um, the entire program is collaborative and it's very core uh, between those who are students in it and those who teach in it and that. So um, thanks to that. Uh, I'm on mute. You mean on Zoom? Thanks. It's good to know. And this is David here. There we go. Okay, we'll get you connected in a minute here. Give your greetings. Um, I'm going to show a quick greeting here. I was able to get in one more time right before this show. This is a quick video that I uh, took. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to take video in Seattle, but I got a video here of, um, of the guys giving a greeting to all of you. Uh, and I'm going to try to turn this up. This, this is the best we could do for now. Um, but uh, hopefully, let me get the volume up here. And this will start us off here. This is William Jones, Manuel Bentlock, Ryan Miller, Mike Simmons, and Benny Rios. So, hopefully. This goes. Hmm. Just have to be quiet. You see, my eyes, that's a good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is William Jones. I'm currently incarcerated as Savior of Racial Sins. Today is a beautiful day to take the privilege to look at the wonderful pictures that's in this exhibit. The picture that you're going to see cannot capture the numbers that the media wants to say. But I hope when you see these pictures, they will give you an understanding of the knowledge, love, that's presented here at North Park University. The men that are in the news is brilliant. They're graduates of North Park. Their names are Right? 
So the artist says a few things. Uh, sponsored by the School of uh, Music, Art, and Theater and that. So if, if you'll allow me just for a few minutes to say something about being a photographer here. And then we're going to turn it over to Marcos and to David uh, and to Tony. Um, so I'm involved in Stateville often as a photographer. Probably most of the times that I'm going in, thanks to a lot of petitions from people like Laura or Vicky or Michelle have been able to bring a camera. And that is, a, you know, maybe you saw it in the statement, but that's a very rare thing. Like maximum security prisons don't like bringing in photographers, right? So um, to get permission to do that uh, about six years ago was an even more exceptional deal. Um, as I noted, some of the men that I took in that first time that I was in had not had their photo taken in 10, 12 years. The only photo that they had of themselves was an ID photo, uh, sometimes called a mugshot, um, that is simply them standing before the Stateville employee that takes their photo, right? So um, to be in there uh, as a photographer was a relatively, it was certainly a new experience for me, and it was a new experience for them. Um, any number of people in Stateville, Stateville were probably suspicious of me being in there, although they did approve it, um, uh, thanks to relationships that had already been built uh, between some of the faculty in the, the seminary and Michelle. Um, they had some sense that, uh, as Michelle's husband, I was coming in with some kind of trust, right? So as a photographer going into a new situation with somebody you don't know to take their image, right, like Tim was mentioning, when you factor in uh, situation and insiders and outsiders and me being a white man and many of them being people of color, right? There's lots of dynamics that I'm trying to pay attention to and uh, the students in there were gracious enough to work with me and me with them that uh, some great uh, photos were produced, right? And these photos for the most part, right, what you're seeing is a small fraction of the ones that I've taken over many years, most of the photos uh, are available um, most of the time for family members, right? Uh, I've been honored to be able to be a conduit for images, uh, sort of a visual communication between the families and their friends on the outside, uh, and then being able to see people on the inside. Um, so those connections have been part of what it means to be a photographer, right? And so much of that is dependent upon uh, building relationships over time. Um, I told Tim that I, would, I wanted to do a show in June because it was the first graduating class. Most of these images, especially on that far wall, have been taken since June, so it's a good thing uh, we didn't just have that. Prior to this summer, I was pretty much only in there for special events, uh, a convocation, a graduation, there's some images from a concert um, that was there. Um, and those kinds of images had the images uh, that come from sort of special events, right? Much of the images on that wall are about the life that they're living in one wing of Stateville, the education wing, in a small set of rooms um, for a few hours uh, a week. And as I noted um, in the statement, it's really important, and that's why I had this set of images when you first walk in and this outline of the prison cell. It's very important to know that as real as some of the emotions being expressed in these images are, of joy or friendship or of humor, as real as those are, um, uh, many hours, most hours of the week, um, are not spent in that education wing among the community that uh, has been established there. Um, and the realities of that are not ones that I can speak to, um, other than trying to be aware of them and learning from uh, the stories that are told. Um, so that's the juxtaposition that uh, in putting this show together with the students of Stateville, um, even though they were my images, we worked through the images together. I uh, gave them outlines of the gallery. Uh, they sketched out ideas on which emotions they wanted on different walls. Um, we worked through the writings of Frederick Douglass and um, uh, a book that they read uh, this spring, um, Art and Activism, uh, with one of their classes. So 
Uh, it was a collaborative show, and we're going to try to recreate it. Uh, Vicki has already started to recreate some of this inside one of the classrooms there. So um, this show will be down at the end of this week, uh, but um, it hopefully will have a life in other spaces as well, because there was a lot of um, the people that you see in here uh, were part of putting it all together. Um, the last thing I think I'd just say and um, for a, is just as an, one thing about photography, I would say that every art is powerful because of its limitations. Um, uh, for a painter, you have to deal with the limitations of the viscosity of the paint, right? Just something as basic as that, right? As a sculptor, it's the stubbornness of the stone. As a violin player, it's the physical qualities of wood itself. Um, photography these days seems like something that can be so manipulated. It can be, you know, so creative in all the digital ways that you can do that. Um, but I think something about the power of photography is that it is always, the assumption is it's always tied to truth. Um, there's always an expectation that there was a moment and it happened at this time and this expression was given and this something real happened then. It's transformed into an image, but it, photography more than other arts, I think you tend to look through it. Um, the second thing is that photography is always connected to time. Um, there was a, this little text I was going to put up, I could never find a, quite a place to do it. Um, it says 1 30th of a second, 30 seconds, and 30 years. Um, something that uh, would come up occasionally in conversations with the students inside was some of the people are inside because of a decision they made in 30 seconds that cost them 30 years of their life. And what you see, if you haven't been inside, is one thirtieth of a second of your life. And, um, and hopefully, we hoped that in seeing this thirtieth of a second, uh, that you would see something uh, complex. Sorry about this. Uh, so that's, I think, the power that photos have. And as Tim noted, um, you can't anticipate that power and how it affects people and what memories people bring to images. And um, for some of the ways that the show has worked out in our campus uh, in unpredictable ways, in ways that I should have predicted, um, I'm sorry for any harm that was done. Um, but hopefully the conversation continues. Anyways, I'd like to turn it over now to graduates of the School of Restorative Arts um, to say a few words with all of you. Um, David, we're going to get you connected in a minute here through sound. Uh, I've got to clean this lens here one second. Uh, but I'm wondering if Tony, uh, if I can invite Tony Zaro to come up. Like me, did not speak like me, 
then now we were able to compare our linguistics and understand what is it that you are trying to communicate. And this is what I'm trying to communicate. We were able to change our body language and our postures as we sat in uncomfortable places. Over time, relationships were formed, and we learned that when you cannot build bridges, build underground railroads, because there will always be obstacles and systems to keep us separated. So it's not about the ideology. It's more about the human connection. And the education that we received through the School of Restorative Arts was holistic. It was not only about my mind, because I was studying and taking classes before I came to the School of Restorative Arts. What I learned was how to be in a community with people who were different than me and how to grow with the people that walk with me. So to me, this is something that I don't notice on campus, of intentional community. It does not matter about yet. It matters more about your impact than your intent. A lot of people come to the campus because they get paid, but the students choose a smaller campus to get to know their professors. But no professor takes the time out to get to know the students as individuals because these students are emerging adults and they don't know what they don't know. So eventually, Professors have to transition and do not want to be professors but mentors because these are your future leaders. And thank you, Carl. Try talking for a minute and see if we hear you here. I, well, I can kind of hear you. One second, let me try one more thing. <laughs> one moment here. Give me a second. Let me see if I can switch it over to the monitor. Get a little bit. Keep talking. I'm going to, um, uh, I thought I had it set up to go through the HDMI, but I'm not. So I'm going to bring it over here. Oh, oh we're good. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, all right, so I think you can all hear it if you're over here. So I'm just going to hold it up here. Okay, David, you go ahead. Yeah, so I would like to speak on inside this uh, beloved community that I was so blessed to be a part of with the SRA was that we have just learned how to grow with one another. It was so beautiful with this uh, vision. They had such a vision that seeing that we was bigger than what they uh, uh, claimed that we were as being convicted of a crime or so. But they seen something, this young lady Michelle seen something greater in us. And just one mistake didn't make us that individual. It was something greater she seen. And so I love that beautiful part and how that she made us see the vision. And the vision grown was so big and it collaborated with uh, so many individuals on the outside. We had so many people speaking for us and speaking in our behalf, and then became a part of us. And that was the beauty of it. It's in the connecting of the education, the connecting of the, the vision of the support system that we came with, uh, the financial, and then the support system of just seeing that God was in the vision, and then how that it moved in people's hearts and minds to see the humanity in us. And I was so grateful to Michelle to say that she was the leader of that. And she had a vision for that. And she said, no, I see more and greater things than just what's in front of us. And now we are so blessed to see men coming out and doing great things and doing awesome in their life. You have some being teachers. You have some being professors. You have some being counselors. And it's just so awesome how God has blessed us with just a vision that a young lady had. And then from that vision, she used education as a, as a mentor uh, and as a tool to get us out. And then in that education, it became a, being a network dealing with a collaborator of people. And I just want to say thank you. And uh, that this Restored Apart class is just one of many programs that's going to be a part of, of seeing uh, coming out, of people coming out and being a part of communities that's going to progress the community and make the community grow.
Indeed. Good evening. Carl, I thank you for capturing those moments in time where I was in prison. All of our time is what encapsulate every moment. I think based upon the prompt, the thing that I believe that I learned on the inside of the prison, ironically enough, which out here can learn from is being accepted. There's a communal aspect within that place that does not find it easy to judge the book by the cover, proverbially speaking. Whereas out here, there are some elements of that that transpire to you within this community. May none of that be perceived as a disparagement against North Park or the community, because it is a beloved community. It is loving, it is accepting, but this is a collective upon which I am speaking about. Individually, there is some work that needs to be done, and I, myself, need to do some work on myself. However, with all of that being said, the matriarch of the program, Michelle Clifton, saw from the things that you created and the thoughts that you gave us and the things that you pulled from a part of us, they cannot be replicated, and they will go far, they, further than anyone could imagine. So as to not over extend my time since I was given 2.5 minutes. <laughs> that was it. Frederick Douglass. 
a speech, or his was pictures in progress, this was pictures of progress. So there is a kind of progression that you can go through. Um, they wanted, uh, when they talked about what they wanted presented, they wanted some reminder of their institutional life, um, some reminder of the architecture that they have to deal with, uh, that is oppressive in its own way, um, and some even little messages like this, even though there's a story about how this has been changed, um, messages like that. These mug shots here that were sort of dangling here, um, they wanted them in there. They wanted them as a reminder of uh, this is part of their photographic history. And, uh, that, um, and they also wanted it to show some contrast between what a certain kind of photograph is from the ones that they are participants in. Um, so this is the reminder in some very basic way, right? None of this is complete. This is not a documentary. Um, this is a reminder of institutional life, uh, the F house, the Panopticon, the basic outline of a cell, and then uh, the naming of all the students, all the faculty that I've taught in the program. Uh, there's been lots of people over the years, but at least we have faculty and students. And then moving through daily life in those few hours in the education wing and then finishing here. These moments, in some ways, they look like they're the beginning of the show. This was from graduation. Uh, we could talk about this, but this was a moment when all their families, for the first time, could be in the same room together. Mm -hmm. um, so imagine your relatives never having met your best friend that you've been with friends with for years, right? Uh, because when you go visit a relative in prison, you don't get to see all their friends, you don't even see their community, right? You have that one-on-one -on -one meeting or two-on-one -on -one meeting. So this was a theater room. Uh, there's scores more pictures from that day of uh, being with family, families introducing each other to one another. Um, anyways, any one of these moments, uh, uh, these gentlemen can describe as well. This is just the flow of the show. So. I have a question. Um, yeah. Because as you stated when you first put this up, there's a lot of controversy. And yes, a picture is worth a thousand words, but for about context, you know, that's a, a pretext. So why does individuality matter? What is what? Individuality matter. With each individual in the pictures. So when we right. talk mm -hmm. about why each individual story is different, they are not the same. The conditions are not the same. The pathway to release was not the same. Right. The justice in each particular situation was not the same. Why does that matter as you present the education component of that? Yeah, I mean, tell me if, if I'm going in the direction you're asking. I'm thinking of particular decisions that were made about how to put it together. So one of them was, did they want their name by their photo, right? So one way of recognizing individuality would be to have a name and a story or some basic elements uh, by each photo. Um, they, in general, they did not want that. They did not want uh, names and photos associated. They thought they wanted to give an impression of the whole of their life, in, not the whole of their life, but the, the, communal, the communal aspect of their life. Um, yeah, some of them, obviously they, have, they each had their own stories, right? Uh, Mike Simmons spoke about that in his greeting when he said, and William said, these are not their words. And so um, these are their images, right? And, and they can't explain all of their words and all of their stories and that. So I think the impression... Hopefully, uh, this is what I say. The impression is that you're aware that you're looking at an individual that is experienced in a particular moment and has a particular history, but you don't know what that is, right? Um, the invitation would be find out. You know, Manuel in his letter to the students kind of challenged uh, students or our community, like, um, get to know me. I'm, I'm here. You know, the SRA can arrange people to get in. Uh, I'm not gonna, still a lot of like loopholes for that or like red tape for that, but still, you can get to know them. Some of our students write letters. 
uh, to people uh, on the inside of that. So individuality is not really expressed here. It's hinted at, I think. Um, but I forgot to plug this earlier. Melissa Pavlik, who I'm sorry I didn't mention in my earlier gratitude, uh, is absolutely a pillar of that community. And, um, and she, with the students, uh, puts together a publication, a regular publication called Feather Bricks. Many of you know what this is. Um, these, if you want the words of these men and their poems and their visions and uh, their challenges and that, um, I have Alex McGrone's some indication of Feather Bricks, but this is available online. Uh, we print up copies for them on the inside. Um, this, I think, gives much more of a sense of individual stories, processes, creative outlets. So. It's on the Writing Center website. <laughs> it's on the Writing Center website. And yes, absolutely. In terms of aesthetic choices, some of the pictures are colored in terms of some are black and white, but they all try to color in these electric pictures. Yeah, all that was done uh, in the editing process. And um, it wasn't that I, selecting the photos was a, uh, it wasn't like I selected them all. It was in the printing in that some things I thought came across better in black and white. There's different colorations given to some of them because it fit. There was a big, there was a discussion we had with several of them on the photographic depiction of darker complexions versus lighter complexions. Uh, there's a whole history to that in photography and decisions Kodak made in the past to, uh, to make white faces the standard of how they developed their films. Um, since then that's been started to be corrected, but uh, that's the kind of conversation that would come up. In the process of look at these images, there is equal detail given to people's faces. Can we change that? So, yeah. Thank you, Carl.